There's very little studies done on melted bricks. When you try to research this subject, it's just not something that people have invested much time into. So today I have. Okay, I think I'm going to open up this video with this guy melting a brick. I already made the video, and I'm still researching. And I just found this, and I think the only appropriate way to present it is at the beginning. So today we're going to look at melted bricks. This is a 2800 watt oxy hydrogen torch, Brown's gas. This channel is called Nobox7, and I just found him while searching melted bricks, or anyone that could show us an example of this taking place. Now this is super overkill. We're just looking to melt a regular brick. The brick he's melting here is a fire brick. And later on in the video, I'll show you that these bricks can withstand temperatures of 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. A fire brick, much stronger than a regular brick. And here, this guy with his oxyhydrogen torch is kicking out 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's have a little look. And here he goes, he's just torching away, torching, 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 torching. 4,600 degrees, now look at this little puddle of hole. And here again, it looks like he's hitting it. And we'll see what kind of damage he does this time. Unbelievable and clearly melted. Look at the spot he did initially. Just looks like a blob of melt. And this is just a focused spot. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. And I love that we have the old one next to it. And there you go. That's our first melting of brick. And we'll continue. I thank you for being here. Welcome. Okay, I'm just gonna have to record as I research. There's just too much stuff that I'm passing by, and I'll probably not get back to it. I can't verify this. This is from 2017, and we're told this brick has been fired to melt. Half a London brick from London. And apparently it looked like this. I'm not sure. It looks like a muffin. But can a brick melt? I believe so. I've shown one in a past video. But let's focus on the present. Can a brick melt? Under normal circumstances, or a normal fire, like the great fire of everything in the late 1800s, early 1900s, I don't think that a fire just passing through a city in that time period, very low tech, we are told, would make brick buildings crumble or bust up into pieces. That, I think, is not realistic. But how about if it was hit with two or three thousand degrees Fahrenheit? Could brick melt? We've looked at this picture before of this brick munitions depot that was said to blow up. And many people don't think this is an example of melted brick. So let's not use this one. It is a very interesting study. And where most of the heat would be, up on the top, we seem to have dripping. But again, we won't use this example. Here's an example of some bricks melting back into mud. A very, very interesting example. But the question today is, can a brick melt? This is not a good example, so we won't use this one. Who could we turn to? Who could melt us a brick? So here I've just punched in melted bricks on the DuckDuckGo. And let's have a little look at what we can see. Okay, so let's start with this one. This looks like a bona fide brick. Bona fide. And what has happened to this brick? It looks like great heat has been passing through it. Of course, the brick must have been facing the other way. And the brick was dripping. Was there something else dripping through it, as some arrogant prick might proclaim? No. This is melting brick. Let me repeat myself. Melted, sorry, yes, to all who may be concerned. 
let it be known, brick can melt. And yeah, this video is mostly addressing one person, one prick. Studio just warned me, and she's right. If you don't know who that is, that's my cat. And when I get pissy, she belts out a meow, keeping me in check. And I accept, even though I'm right. Let's look a little deeper. The Clay Club. The Clay Club posted this in 2012. Forgive me, I have to feed my cat. Okay, I'm back. A scoop of fish and bone broth for the princess. Forgive me. The Clay Club. Sorry, this is a small victory for the melted community, which I do not proclaim to be a part of, but I do believe that a brick can melt. And we shall save this. Bookmark. And once again, the Clay Club. Monday, November 12th, 2012, long before anybody made a peep about such ideas. Right around the Mayan prophecy, just a little before it. Perhaps it came to pass. Perhaps this right here was a nugget of truth dropped in this fine year for me to share with you in 2022. So this is pretty legit. You can check it out yourself. ncclayclub.blogspot.com Posted by John Britt at 9 in the morning. So a melted brick. These guys are in the clay business. Potters, ceramic artists, and I think he meant to say thought I would post this for Ian. This was a cool partially melted brick. And no comment. Well, I'll make a comment today. Thank you, John Britt. That is all we really needed. And I think this image proves a melted brick. But we'll look at a little bit more. And here, this brick that melted in the kiln. The kiln is what they use to bake the bricks. It's an oven. And here, I am sure a part of the heating element in this giant oven must have broke loose. A bracket or something melted, dropping the heating element onto this brick. Now, this is clear as could be to me. That's exactly what happened. It's on the edge. It didn't disturb any of the other bricks. It did leave a great deposit of metal as it melted itself. The heating element was melting the brick and melting itself. So we have a chunk of metal here. But we also see that it has burned through the brick. And have a good look. And let's see what some people had to say about this on Reddit. Probably some water trapped in the clay before baking. Somebody says that's an explosion within the brick rather than it melting. Somebody said that's called a cinder rose. Somewhat a rare phenomenon in the brick making industry, especially now that materials are so much more refined. Back in the 1700s, those would fetch a hefty premium because builders would use them in north facing walls as a kind of good luck talisman. And I do agree with this. I always try to leave a defect. Usually only I can see the defect in my building. Perhaps symbolic that we are not perfect beings. Such things are reserved for the creator. And we shouldn't strive to be perfect, but simply to do our best. And a lot of interesting comments. But all other people's ideas. I can only share mine. Here is a melted brick pile burned in Denmark. Denmark, home of glorious star forts. Let's have a little look. Very interesting bricks. Were these like all regular bricks? Were these holes at one point? Or did they have this shape? I don't know. But what's clear is they are fused and melted together. Let me know your thoughts. So here is a photo of some melted bricks at a factory in Medellin. Medellin is the second largest city in Colombia after Bogota. So here we are in Colombia. And this is a website called Sight Unseen. And the caption says melted bricks at a factory. They say, for instance, at the brick factory, all the bricks piled next to the burner get ruined in each batch. Exactly what my hypothesis was on 
how the last picture that we looked at got melted. He says, maybe this is how it happens in the US, but my guess is some high-tech heat sources and temperature monitors prevent this. So we're not told that they collapsed in on themselves while they were still soft, no. He says this happens with every batch in Colombia because their kilns are not as high-tech, he says, as he imagines that they are in America. He says they get ruined because the bricks get piled next to the burner. Too close to the burner. And this is some artist website, and the man was very happy that they donated these bricks to some artists. And this is an artist's website, and we can find the truth everywhere. And here again is a melted London brick. It looks like this girl is just putting chunks of brick into a kiln, probably at its highest setting. And I have no doubt we can melt bricks, we can melt rocks, and if this is possible, if we can, if we, imperfect, fragile humans, can melt rocks and bricks, could some great cataclysm with some plasmatic force raining from above render buildings into mountains, into melted, vitrified mountains, along with pure powder. Many forces would be taking place at once. Great frequencies, plasma and electricity, heat, followed by cooling. And any structures in the realm could change their shape very easily. So I wanted to seek out some people that were melting things. This channel, Green Power Science, gave us a nice example of just how easy it would be to melt granite. He tells us the temperature is 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. He turns granite into obsidian. Of course, granite being one of the hardest stones in the world. And here we can see his setup, a very basic Fresnel lens. And here, just average chunks of granite. And he points his apparatus right at it, and very quickly, within 10 minutes, it just turns into a pool of bubbling obsidian glass. Here he's just showing us how it, this lens just cuts through steel. And then he puts another little chunk of granite, he touches it to the bubble, or the bubbling liquid, and he makes these little strands of obsidian. He said those are smaller than a human hair. And he even fuses and melts metals into the granite. Here we can see a closer look. And I did scour this guy's channel for melting brick, but I didn't see any. But I'm convinced that this is our ticket. And this is another guy. He's melting a rock with a very similar Fresnel lens. This Fresnel lens very 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 simple and powerful harnessing the power of the sun i have a little solar oven and it actually reaches up to 400 degrees and all it is is a piece of glass and a little box a little oven box this is more complex here i saw a video of a guy using a torch an hho gas and his video, as you can see here, is titled HHO Torch Melting a Fire Brick. And you can see he's already melted a few spots into it. And really interesting, this torch really kicks ass. Unfortunately, his camera doesn't pick it up that well. There is one point where he puts his hand in front of the camera and we actually get a good look at his setup. And I'm not sure how hot this is getting. He says, a fire brick can withstand temperatures of about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So he is using a fire brick. So that's an unfair comparison. This is made to withstand extreme heat. And he's boasting that he can still melt a small hole into this fire brick with this HHO torch. He says the observable fact that the torch is causing the firebrick material to melt and boil shows that we are producing temperatures much higher 
than what a fire brick can withstand. So he's hitting this fire brick with temperatures higher than 4000 degrees with this HHO torch. I wish he had a video using this torch on a regular brick that is not meant to withstand 4000 degree temperatures. This thing would work. And if any of you have an HHO torch, please torch a brick on video and send it to me or any of the channels. Here he sells the torch at the hydrogengarage.com. And there we go. I'm not sure how much it is. And this torch might be the most powerful thing, but I'm still pretty impressed with this Fresnel lens. At one point, in times of old, we were told such a thing was called the Archimedes Death Ray. And very, very specific details. I've seen dozens of depictions of this usage of the luminary's power, the harnessing of it. And here we can see the device at the top of the tower, ultimately cooking this boat. Now I'm sure boats would have had their own too. And could it all be this simple? Could resets have been caused using such simple technology, harnessing a greater power that no man could ever create from scratch, but now utilizing, in this case, a luminary to reap havoc is a possibility. As we've just seen, we are told in history, as always, people were so primitive, rubbing sticks together for fires. And here we see depictions like this in the old world. This lady shooting a beam out of her eye. And this child. Or maybe this little dragon is shooting the child, I don't know. But clearly as common as a big lighter. And could such technology have been used to wipe out the cities in the Americas? Now I've told you before, I think the Great Resets are cyclical. But in between these cataclysms, I think men take advantage. There are wars and people fight for control and power. And in the past we see a lot of airships. And could they have mounted these on airships, causing all these fires? How very easy it would be with one of these devices mounted on an airship to burn all these cities or the parts of them that you wanted to, and then move back in and take over. It really seems like this may have been a possibility. This is the grandfather of the direct energy apparatus. And so I think I'll just end there. If you have any other melted brick photos, please feel free to share them in the comments below. The easiest way to share a photo with me is via Google Drive. Make sure you click share with anyone and just stick the link in the comments below. I would love to see what examples you have. And I look forward to buying one of these Fresnel lenses and melting some bricks of my own. So I really didn't want to make this video, but I felt I had to. It wasn't enough to show you my brick that I'd been sitting on for a few years in a past video. A gift given to me by a friend. A brick that was pulled out of a blast furnace and had melted. I thought the video was pretty clear and transparent. I even dropped the brick in the video. Another time I found a brick in nature. I showed you that one too. It looked melted. I found it buried in the ground. Only the top was showing. This website is called Scottish Brick History. You can see on the top. And this is pretty legit. A story of an old brick factory beginning in the 1850s. Very thorough, and even showing some old maps. Here we can see the brick and tile works on this plot of land. Here again we can see it, looking like some old Starfort map. Brick and tile works, looking like a key. But I'll stay on track. Here are some old articles. 1868, and then in 1873 the brick and tile factory is listed for sale. Here's an article. Brick and tile work plant for sale. A bargain. In whole or in lots. 
Very interesting. This random, obscure, classified ad in 1873. A 14-horsepower vertical crank overhead high-pressure engine with reversing handle pump, a Cornish boiler, 13 feet and 6 inches by 4, and a flue and all mountings for the flue. A horizontal mill with four rollers, each 30 by 12, with all the driving gear, a vertical mill, driving wheels, and finally screening and tile making machines with wheels, pulleys, two clay wagons, pressing machine, sludge pump, two potter's wheels, and also a shed containing 8,500 feet of shelving and two patent brick and tile kilns, 15 by 10 feet. The brick and tile work factory is within two miles of the NB railway station. Apply to James Turnbull. No price given, and of course no phone number. Typical predicament. In 1898, the brick and tile work factory is now marked as disused. So whatever happened after the death of this supposed founder, shortly after it goes into disuse. But still on the map, depicting two kilns and a cottage. Here we go. Old kiln, one and two, and maybe this is the cottage. And here it is from the Google Earth. And sure enough, the same shape of this piece of land. It looks like they've possibly torn down the kilns, or maybe these are it. And anyway, this guy doing a little archaeology around here. And he finds bricks and mounds and piles of bricks. And where did everything mysteriously go? Nonetheless, he's doing good work. He finds this megalithic stone you can see compared to the shovel. And these clay pipes, which I actually had at my coffee shop. They actually failed during my occupation of the premises. And finally, what I wanted to show you. What did this man find? Mind you, this is Scottish brickhistory.com or .uk. Very official, coming from nobody in our community. And let's zoom in so it's nice and crystal clear. This is not just the speculation of some asshole. No, this is somebody that represents a very thorough body of work on the history of bricks. Looks like his name is Mark Cranston. And I have not gone through all his works. He has left his contact information here. And I have no reason to believe he's not an expert. Compiling all of this history for us. And here is what this kind man has to say. Below. A brick showing melt. In quotes. Damage. Most likely the result of prolonged exposure to the heat of the kiln. A brick showing melt damage. So here's a melted brick. Now, what he seems certain about is that this is a brick showing melt damage. What he is not certain about is how this brick melted. He says, most likely the result of prolonged exposure to the heat Yes, exposure to heat seems certain, but he's just not sure whether it was the heat of the kiln or something else. We, of course, discuss the something else in this community, and I'm glad I was prodded to do this extracurricular research and seek out some examples of melted bricks. Here again we can see the other side of that same brick looking exactly like the brick that I showed. Pure vitrification, almost looking like a plastic on the corner. Such heat that air is squeezing out, causing these pockmarks, or little craters, clearly dripping 
and the other sides perhaps cooking out so fast that they begin to crack. And really, just from this brick, we can get an idea at how much of the surface of our realm was formed and why it looks the way it does. Little canyons looking like the southwest. And here another look. Again, that same dripping corner. It's been faced on its vertical side. We're looking down on it. And I hope this has answered the ever-debated question in this community as to whether a brick can melt. I won't tell you what to think. You tell me. Can a brick melt? Well, that's it for today. I hope I wasn't beating a dead horse. I suppose we can move forward now. I wish you all well. Thanks for being here. God bless. I love you all. And I'll see you next week.